Hi, I'm Emily from the Milwaukee Public Library and thank you for joining me for this simple science program. Our project today is inspired by the life and work of George Washington Carver, who I learned a lot about in this book from the library. George Washington Carver for Kids, His Life and Discoveries with 21 Activities by Peggy Thomas. So not only is it a wonderful biography about his life, it also has all those great STEM experiments that you can try at home or at school that are inspired by his work. Now we're going to be doing one of the projects from this book today. We'll be making a very simple vasculum. Stay tuned to find out more about what that is. This project today is appropriate for kids of most ages, but definitely with some grown-up help. All right, so let's get started. George Washington Carver was an amazing person. An orphan born into slavery sometime between 1860 and 1865, by the turn of the century he was a celebrated agricultural chemist and botanist whose mission was helping poor black southern farmers find commercial uses for their wealth of resources and crops. In his younger years, he moved north looking for opportunity, traveling throughout the Midwest working odd jobs and trying to eke out an education, all while dealing with racism and poverty but always he persisted. While we know him today for his promotion of the peanut crop and his many, many inventive uses for peanuts, he was really an accomplished man in so many ways. He was a well-regarded teacher, a talented pianist and painter, and just such a well-rounded scientist whose curiosity for and passion about plant life continues to inspire so many today. So in George's honor, we're going to create what's called a vasculum. It's not his own invention, but it's definitely a tool of his trade. You'll see lots of old photographs with George wearing his vasculum, which is a, con a container for keeping plant samples safe. Um, so as you travel throughout the countryside, picking your plant samples, you have a way to keep them from crumbling and falling apart and getting messed up. Um, so it's a very helpful tool if you are interested in plant life. So let's go ahead and make one. So a vasculum is a pretty simple contraption and hopefully you can find all the materials to make it pretty easily at home. Vasculum is the word right here and it's from the Latin meaning a small vessel or container. Typically that vessel or container is long, metal, and cylindrical. Well, we'll be using cardboard here. I'm using an empty cardboard box from some plastic wrap that I finished up and I'll throw out the roller and remove the serrated edge to make it a little safer. Please get your grown-ups help with that. You can also use a cardboard box from some foil, um, something like that that's a little bit longer and skinnier and has a top that closes. To make it a little more watertight and honestly a little more attractive, I'm going to cover my vasculum with duct tape. And if you have duct tape at home, you can do the same or decorate it however you'd like with markers, paper, stickers. Next, we'll need a strap. And this is typically worn over the shoulder or around the neck and you want it to fit comfortably and be a little bit longer so that you can reach into it easily as you're collecting your samples. So something like a sturdy garden twine would work. I'm going to spruce mine up a little bit with some heavier duty ribbon that I have. And you'll want to measure it around yourself to make sure that it's long enough and comfortable enough, but probably a couple feet so that it hangs nicely. I'm going to fasten mine with some brads. They're a forked brass fa fastener, but you can certainly just tie yours to your vasculum too. So whatever works for you. And then some scissors will be for cutting my duct tape or any other decorative materials that you might have. All right, let's go. So let's begin by preparing the box that we're going to use for our vasculum. So I'll just get rid of that empty roller, throw that in your recycling or use it for a future craft. And then we're going to remove this serrated cutting edge that's on the lid. So please get your grown-ups help with that. Depending on how your box is constructed, you might be able to pull it off, but mine is punched in pretty well. You can see all these circles or it might be glued in. So removing it that way by pulling it off is both dangerous and kind of difficult. So I'm going to just use my scissors and cut around it and it'll still leave most of the lid intact. We're not gonna lose too much space there. So I'm gonna cut mine out and you can do the same.
Now that I've removed that serrated edge, I'm just gonna put that aside. I won't need it again. And the other thing that you might need to do to prepare your box, if it's like mine, it has these little punch in cutouts on both ends. Usually you would press that in to secure the roller in place, but you don't need that if you're going to be fastening your shoulder strap with these brads, because that will just punch right through the cardboard. So you don't want that big circle open on each end. However, if you're going, if you don't have brads and you're going to just be tying a knot, you may want to keep this circle open because you can put your shoulder strap through that and knot it. You'll want to make your knot on the inside of the box so that the lid can still close over it without having interference of a big knot on the outside. However, I'm using the brads, so I didn't want those punch outs to be loose. So I just taped the insides to reinforce them so they couldn't push back through or out. So you determine what style of fastener you're going to be using for your shoulder strap, a brad, or just tie a knot. And you can tape to secure those punch in parts if you want to, or you can leave them as is. So now probably the most fun part of making our basculum, and that is decorating it. Round up any materials at home that you'd like to use, markers, stickers, paper. In my case, I'm using duct tape. Duct tape's cool for a couple different reasons. One, it looks awesome. You can get it in a variety of colors and patterns if you're so inclined. It also makes it more weather resistant. Of course, a traditional basculum is made out of metal, which makes it water resistant, but we're using cardboard, kind of a thin card stock here. So if it rains or gets wet, you know, it's gonna get soggy and your plant samples might get ruined. So duct tape helps a little bit with that. What I like about duct tape too is conveniently, I have a strip right here. You can see that it's the exact width of my box. Makes it really easy to cover all sides with duct tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, work on covering most of my box. I probably won't do the inside, but I certainly could if I wanted to, and that would make it even more weather resistant. And you go ahead and decorate yours. My box is all taped up. Did a little extra reinforcement on the inside lid. Gonna write something along the top and then we'll be ready to affix the shoulder strap. For your shoulder strap, it's always best to do too much rather than too little, because you can always cut excess, but you can't add it back very easily. So I have some ribbon here. I've cut several feet in length. And I'm going to be wearing my vasculum around my neck, but you could also wear it around your shoulder if you'd like to. So practice with your strap hanging over your shoulder versus over your neck to see which one you like better and then to get the right length too. And to figure out the right length for you, figure out where you want your vasculum to sit on your body most comfortably. I'm going to do mine right about here, kind of on my belly. So I want to make sure that my strap fits on this side and on this side that. See, I've got plenty of excess that I can cut away, but that looks about good length right there where I can see into my vasculum, open it up, and it still hangs comfortably as I move about. On both ends of my boxes, I've gone ahead and made a little mark with my marker, a little more than halfway down, and that's where I'm going to poke through the sharp ends of my brad. They'll go all the way through the box, and that'll affix the shoulder strap. It should go right through the fabric and hold that on. This is also about where you could make your mark. And if you left this part open right there, you could poke through and just make a knot if you don't have a brad as a fastener. Go ahead and do that on both sides. And it should give you just enough room to, to open and close your lid without it being obstructed by the brad or the knot. On this side, I've done the whole process here. A little more than halfway down. I poked the brad very easily through this thin fabric. You might have to work a little bit harder to get yours poked through. And you can see that goes all the way through the cardboard to the inside of the box. You bend the ends down to keep it secure and you could even reinforce it by taping them down. 
So on this side, I'm going to poke through the mark I made, just a very tiny hole, small enough that the little brad ends can fit through. I'm gonna do that with the end of my scissors right here. That can be sharp and a little bit tough, so please get your grown-ups help to do this part. So I poked a small hole through this end with my scissors. I went ahead and taped down the brad ends on this side so there's nothing sharp sticking out. And now I'm ready to put the shoulder strap on this side. So here's the end of my fabric that I cut earlier. Got my brad right here. And this should very easily just poke through my very thin fabric and through that hole that I made. And then you wanna bend down both of these prongs. Flesh against the box like that. And then again, so I don't have any pokey sharp parts sticking out in my vasculum, I'm just going to cover that. Like so. And then one last thing, because outside my home right now, it is snowy and wet. So as I go foraging for plant samples, they're probably gonna be a little bit soggy and I don't want them getting the inside of my vasculum wet or each other wet. I folded up a paper towel into thirds long ways and I'm gonna set that at the bottom right there. I could even layer it if I found a bunch of different plant samples, I could layer those between each sample to keep them protected. All right, ready to wear it and go forage. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a ton of fun exploring the plant life in your neighborhood. I went outside today and I was able to discover some juniper and here's some raspberry buds. I wonder what you'll discover. And remember, if you'd like to learn more about the life and works of George Washington Carver, please visit our website at mpl.org. There you can search our catalog and request materials for pickup. If you'd like to read this book, George Washington Carver for Kids, his life and discoveries with 21 activities. It's also available as an ebook on Hoopla, which you can access for free with your library card. I hope you check it out.